this is happening again. These are new suicide bombers or suicide lovers. They're going over fences. They're acting as peace activists. They're going over these fences. You don't do this in Israel. They are violating the border. This was a suicide mission. They want the people of Israel to shoot them. They want them to be sent over as innocents. These people are being sent to their deaths and more will be sent this summer over and over and over again and Israel will have no choice but to shoot them because you can't have this happen to your border. What would we do, America, if all of a sudden the Canadians just started coming over our border? Well, actually, we'd probably sell them stuff because they're Canadians. What would happen if people who were shouting death to America, death to America, started coming over our borders all at once? You would have to shoot them. Now, by the way, the same group, Code Pink, who heckled Netanyahu in Congress and APAC and then pretended to somehow security hurt her, mm, cry me a river, the same group is also behind organizing this flotilla last year. And they're always talking about the oppressed people. They take and make them the center of the cause and they will take down the West with them. But believe me, America, this is staged. It is Hollywood. Otherwise, if I didn't know the script, how could I tell you this was going to happen? They're so obvious. Nobody's looking for them. They're arrogant and foolish. Their real intention is not humanitarian aid. What humanitarian refers to a group of people as filth? What, what, did Mother Teresa say that? I don't know. The world is getting behind them. The IAH has ties to Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood, had planned an anniversary flotilla far more massive than the six ship brigade that happened last year. This one will be at least 15 ships from 25 different countries and as many as 150 activists willing to take part in the sequel. It's been delayed until midsummer now. But I go back to the border with Israel and Syria. It's just another play. And it's happened on multiple key border locations here in the last few weeks. They are forcing action and crying vi victim. It's honestly, I mean, we all have kids. It's what happens when one of your kids starts a fight and then goes, Mom, he's hitting me. That's what's happening. They are trying to create a crisis. And they're also doing something else. They are trying to be Martin Luther King. You see, the Jews had a peaceful protest along with Dietrich Bonhoeffer in Germany, and they lost that because Germans at the time were evil and corrupt. It was too far gone. The Weimar Republic took care of that. That's why it didn't work, but it worked for Gandhi and it worked for MLK. It will work here and it will work in the West. That's what they have to do. But it doesn't work if it's not true. I've shown you this picture a billion times and I have explained how this is what this is this is what freed people. It was people standing, really truly believing in what they're doing and what they're doing is good, not evil. They're not willing to kill anyone for it. And they're locked arm in arm and they're speaking out. They're not lashing out. They're not going to set bait. We saw it last week in Israel. Syrians lined up, started pouring across the border. They wanted the image of bloody Palestinians. They wanted Israeli forces like these to shoot. They are forcing the action and crying, crying victim. That's what they did on the flotilla last year. They're trying to be MLK and force Israel and the big bad United States to look like the South in the 1950s and 60s. It will continue, and it will continue to work unless you know about it in advance. I'm going to tell you exactly what you can do and who I think will lead this movement. Next. So how do you beat what is um, a very well-coordinated um, uh, global play that is so well-financed? Well, you spread light on it and then you spread the word. 
if there is a movement in this country and the world, hear me, it will change things. But someone must put out the call. So I do. And here it is. You must educate yourself and stand up and stand for peace. You must stand with profound courage. You must stand with profound compassion. And you must stand together. You must stand shoulder to shoulder and with people of any faith and of no faith, quite honestly, if they're standing for good and righteousness and standing for good over evil. I have uh, never uh, led a movement before. I have never wanted to lead a movement before. Um, people have asked me to run for office and everything else, but um, I haven't wanted to. I haven't wanted to. I've shied away from it because I don't like politics. But this isn't, a, this isn't political. This is something, this is about being a shield for others. That's it. This summer may very well be maybe the only summer in your life that counts in the end. This summer may be the summer when your kids will say to you someday, do you remember when that happened? And you'll say, not only do I remember, I was there. If you will stand by my side, I will stand by yours. The biggest fear of radical factions in Syria and Iran and the Middle East, uh, here in America, and believe me, they watch this show religiously, that's not a guess, I know it is a fact. They know what's about to take place in Jerusalem this summer, and it is the beginning of a movement. I'm not on a collision course with anyone. I don't wish to fight. I will not be violent. I will simply stand and link arms because I trust the American people. I know what that man knew. The American people and really the people of the world, the eyes of the world will be watching and they knew it. And when you have righteousness on your side and courage on your side uh, and it's real, then you are a force for good and you win. When the American people saw those people standing side by side, they chose the right side. That's proven true throughout our history. Even now, college students, while being taught that America is the oppressor and is Israel is the oppressor, and being shouted down by radical activists, those people are in the lion's den. And yet, so many more are standing up. If there ever was a time to question with boldness. That time is right now. The mainstream media ignored the flotilla chants, remember, Kaibar. That's the worst Jewish slaughter. They ignored the chants of Jew, 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 or kill the Jew in Tahrir Square. How is that not shocking the world now? I don't know how many people will stand up in their own communities and start to lead, start to organize, start to connect your church together and say, stand up. I don't know how many people will stand with me at the steps of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem in August. There might only be a few hundred, but millions around the world will begin to stand up. Millions around the world will lend support. Organize. Start your own group. Go to the website and make a passionate plea. I'm not a community organizer. I don't think you are either. I'm not a political activist. I'm guessing you're not either. I'm just like you. I'm a guy who finds myself living in unbelievably bizarre times and I find myself in a unique situation. But that's, that's me. What is your unique situation? We're all pieces to a puzzle. What is your piece? Are you the piece that says, well, wait a minute, I've got this, or I can start a group in Ohio or Texas or Florida? Maybe your piece is starting a blog or taking your blog. Maybe, maybe your piece is, I just know somebody overseas 
and I can get them active. I can get my church to adopt a church in another city in America or in another country someplace around the world. Maybe you have a lot of friends on Facebook. I, I don't know what your piece is. I don't know where your puzzle fits, your piece. But I can guarantee you that we all are pieces to a giant puzzle and it all fits together. I'm calling on you to take a stand. Know the time that you live in. Israel is the keystone to the West. If you remove the keystone, we all fall. You are up against a well-financed campaign, a media that is absolutely in the bag, a State Department that has wanted this from the very beginning. I mean, read about Truman. We have a president who is a great communicator, and he has seemingly an endless supply of teleprompters and people who did this in the 1960s and have been plotting things like this for a long, long time. And then there are those people in the Middle East who are willing to die in order to end the West. But what we have is the truth. What we have is the story of David and Goliath. See, the key is, is that, um, not that you're a puny kid with a slingshot, is that you are ready to answer the call when it is made. You, you have to go and collect those smooth stones at the river's edge before Goliath says, come. You're David. Goliath is headed your way. What is your puzzle piece? What is your slingshot? And what is your smooth stone? Find it and link arms. Go to glennbeck.com slash Israel for more details. May I ask you a question? In a nation of 310 million people, a people that invented air travel, I mean, we went to the moon. We're the country that brought you travel destinations like Disney, Vegas, and Dolly World. You'd think 310 million people, we could find somebody somebody who might be able to execute a decent trip for the most powerful man in the world. Do you think? Too much to ask? Really? Maybe he could help out with the culture and the etiquette of the places he visits. What do they? This trip to uh, Europe for Barack Obama seems to have been planned by Clark Griswold. Um, I mean, I don't... I, I, I've never seen anything like it. I really haven't. I, I don't like to, you know, revel in his gaffes or his fumbles. Uh, but it seems to me that our country is really starting to resemble National Lampoon's European vacation, in case you don't remember. Uh, yeah, those guys. I can't seem to get over to the left, honey. I'll try next time. Sorry. <laughs> we'll get out of this jam in a minute. Kids, Big Ben, Parliament again. Uh, okay. Upon arriving in Dublin, Ireland, President Obama tried to pull off one of the dumbest sounding Irish accents since Leprechaun. You know, the highly acclaimed Leprechaun movies. You see, you shouldn't be so greedy. Yeah. Now here's Jim Carrey, I mean President Obama. After being greeted by the Irish president, listen to the... See, the sun's coming out. <laughs> I can feel it. You've got to be kidding. Shut and be gone, it's a fine day. Top of the morning to you, uh, manly, yes, but I like him too. Okay, stop, please. Later that day, the presidential motorcade gets hung up like a teeter-totter at the embassy. Look at this. Oh, should have checked that. Mm. Fortunately, the only thing harmed in the making of this debacle was our pride. Then the president leaves Ireland early to escape the problems caused by the volcano in Iceland, and the next day, he's off to Westminster Abbey to sign the guest book. Here's his note, it's great. Oh, look at the way he signed it. It's a great privilege to commemorate our common heritage and common sacrifice. And he does the, the, the date in a really European way. Ooh, let's put the, let's put the numbers before them. <laughs> Except it's signed 2008. Mr. President, just keep reliving that year. I know it was a good year for you, wasn't it? Or was that, did you inherit the wrong date from the last administration? I'm not. Of course, our illustrious president then had a chance to redeem himself and set everything right with our closest and strongest ally over the past 100 years. 
at the official state function. But don't worry, nobody was watching. It was just the queen. 